Uh, the other night, I was out at a steakhouse with a good friend of mine. We were, uh, you know, celebrating a little something. And it was him and his wife and their baby. And so it's, you know, I'm sitting there, and there's him, his wife, baby. And he's, we're talking, and he looks over my shoulder, and I look to see what's he looking at. And I turned, and it looked like there was a group of sorority girls that were entering to be seated. And so I checked it out, not in a creepy way, but, you know, for safety, because well, I, I know the Heimlich maneuver, and uh, sorority girls sometimes get stuff stuck in their throats, so I wanted to be, you know, be there just in case, and, you know, I also might want to send a, a shot of, or a round of fireball shots or something over there. You never know, but anyway, so when I turned back around, my friend's wife, she was breastfeeding. And I, I support breastfeeding anywhere, anytime, whatever you got to do. But she said, good thing you were looking back there, because if you were looking here, you would have seen my nipple. And then she giggled. <laughs> I was like, what? And so it's like, nobody gives a fuck about your nipple. This is not middle school. I don't care about your nipple. Now, if she would have said, good thing you were looking there, because if you were looking here, you would have seen my asshole. I'd have been like, oh, shit. <laughs> This is a steakhouse. What, what are you guys doing that your asshole was out? I have so many questions. You had my curiosity, now you have my attention. Right? But she didn't say that. That's just my imagination. And so uh, I live downtown. And uh, I like to walk around in the evenings, get my steps in, you know, lose a little bit of the weight. And so one time I was walking around and I, I see a beautiful woman, right? A beautiful woman walking two toy poodles and she was dressed to the nines and she was uh, uh, elegant and poised. That's not funny. No. Not funny. She was, she was, she was elegant and poised. And I said, wow, she's beautiful. I, I should go up and say something. So I walked over, you know, and I said, uh, good evening. And she said, good evening. And then, you know, I ran out of shit to say at that point. So I said, uh, cute dogs. And she said, thank you. And I was like, well, I got to get out of here now. You know? so, uh, and then I noticed, so beautiful, beautiful woman. Uh, so everything was like a model, like she could be on the cover of Vogue. Uh, she did have one feature that stood out, and that was she had a very large nose, right? And the nose was, it was a giant beak-like nose. Beautiful woman, giant beak nose. And uh, so I was thinking, man, that's a, that's a pretty big nose. And uh, you know, she seemed like she was in her 30s, early 30s, and you know, dressed really nice. So I said, well, she's had time and money to, for society, she could have done something. She could have done something with it, but for society. But she didn't. She said, this is me. I'm going to go around with this. This is me. And so I was like, man, she's confident. She's really confident. I like that. She's hot, right? So I was thinking, here's how my logic works. She's confident. If I fuck her, I'll be confident. <laughs> right? And so I don't know, you know, how much research has been done about that, but I, I'm going to do the research. And... Uh, I don't know if it works for like, if you're playing the piano or something, like, hey, you play the piano. If I fuck you, maybe I can play the piano. I don't think it works like that. But I think if it's something more emotional, because I've fucked depressed girls before, and I got depressed. So if I fuck a confident chick, I, I should be confident. So I was thinking, okay, uh, I got to figure out a way to do this. So. You know, I, I'd go on my walks, so I wasn't stalking her or nothing. I'd go on my walks, like I said, get the steps in. And she's walking too, walks the dogs around the same time. And uh, so I saw her, she, turns out she lives in my building. So I was like, okay, this is gonna happen. We're gonna make this happen. But I need a plan, because you just can't just go around with no plan and fuck hot girls with big noses. You have to <laughs> plan out, how is this, how's this gonna work out? So I was thinking, all right, we got to involve the nose somehow. So we're going to need to be, do missionary, right? Because I need that nose right up front. And so I'm going to be like looking in, her, looking in her eyes, look at the nose. Look at her eyes, look at the nose. And you know, as it's building, you know. I'm starting to get excited right now. You too? Uh, yeah. 
It's, uh, it's a good thing these pants have a strong zipper. I don't want to embarrass myself up here. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm looking at the eyes, looking at the nose, and we're, it's going, and then I could like take her nose into my mouth, oh, oh, right? And, and like form, form a seal with my lips and the base of her nose, oh, all right? And then, but I'm, I'm looking at her in the eyes. And uh, then, as we're getting close, I give her the signal, and she exhales sharply through the nose. And I inhale, right? Huh? No? And it's like, don't judge me. Don't judge me. I didn't do it. I just thought about doing it. I'm gonna do it, but I didn't do it. So, so it's, and it's like the, kind of like the circle of life, right? Because I'm getting her, her, her breath through her nose. She didn't have a cold or anything. It's like a regular day. She, her, her, her breath through her nose, you know, it's going into my lungs and the confidence too, right? And then I'm giving her a little something. Here's that, that's for you. I get this, you get that. And then, yeah. So I think it's a, it's a fair exchange. See, the thing is, it's, it's perfectly fine. It's normal. Now, some of you ladies are like, well, if I get with you, are you going to suck my nose? No, I'll, I'll think that's for her. I'll think of something equally as fucked up for you. But, you know, I try to tell you guys what I'm up to because secrets equal scandals. I don't want to have any secrets because then they're scandals because, like on my Instagram, if all of a sudden, if I didn't say this and on my Instagram you see me with a hot chick with a big nose, you'll be like, what the fuck's up with that hot chick with a big nose? What's, what's Nick doing? But now, I'm on there, and I, I'm kissing her nose, you know? Mm. On Instagram, you go, he did it! That nasty motherfucker did it! And yeah, see, so no secrets. Secrets lead to scandals, and so like uh, my browser history. I don't clear my browser history. I, you can look at it any time, and you will not be surprised. <laughs> You will not be surprised. You will say, this is what I was expecting. This looks exactly like what I was expecting his browser history to look like. But wait a minute, Jonas Brothers fan club? What the fuck is that about? They're like, hey, hold on, fuck you. I was doing research for somebody. The Jonas Brothers are pretty cool anyway, so just let it go. So, yep. Secrets lead to scandal, so you have to tell people. So for example, like if you heard, hey, Nick was found unresponsive on top of a sex doll, then you'd be like, but he's so wholesome. What, what happened? What? But if I was gonna get a sex doll, I don't have one, but if I was gonna get one, I would tell everybody, so you know, to avoid the scandal. So I'd say, hey, getting a sex doll, fuck doll coming. Amazon Prime, baby, gonna be here in two days. Thank you, Jeff Bezos. I'm gonna fuck it, it's gonna be great. And then, now if you heard, hey, he was found unresponsive on top of a sex doll, you go, yeah, 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 that sounds about right. Yeah. And uh, so, when the sex doll came, I would also have to update you, so I'd come into work. Good morning, everybody. No coffee for me, thanks. I uh, woke up the best way, fucking. Fuck this one. Not with a pesky real woman, but with that sex doll I was telling you about. So, it's really good. Twice last night, once this morning. You know, I, I, I like to get it in before I come to work because I find I do my best work with empty balls. So, uh, and I, I brought her, she's in the car, getting warmed by the sun. So, around lunchtime, I'm going to go out and knock off another piece, have a little nooner. And not only am I a good person, but I'm a good friend. So, if you want to go out there and knock off a piece, you can do it too. No, now see, before you pass, I was wearing condoms when I was fucking. I'm keeping it clean. I got moist towelettes out in the glove compartment. Yeah, so you can do it. And so, some of you think that that's gross. But it's not gross, it's because you're framing it wrong in your mind. So, for example, if Scarlett Johansson, Hollywood actress Scarlett Johansson, if I said, hey, Scarlett Johansson's in town. I fucked her last night. She's in the car. 
Apparently I didn't do a good enough job. She wanted me to ask you if you wanted to fuck her. Would you fuck her? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> See? So, and I wouldn't have worn a condom with her. She's full of load out in my car. Then you go out there and fuck her. That's, that's much grosser, right? Who knows who she's been with, but the sex doll, it's only been with me. Right? No. Yeah. So, it's, I think that you're much grosser with the Scarlett Johansson thing. But, you know, let it be known that I offered, and uh, I just ask that you wear a condom and wipe it down when you're done. Or maybe I watch too much porn. Because they say that it uh, changes the wiring in your brain and uh, makes it so just regular stuff doesn't seem uh, okay anymore, you need a little bit more. Maybe that's like the nose thing, I don't know. Uh, that, but I said, I wanna get my innocence back. How can I get my innocence back? Uh, so then I can be like a regular person. And uh, so I, I figured, oh, erotica. So women read erotica. And you use your imagination. And so I was like, instead of just watching porn, I'll read erotica. The problem is erotica is not realistic. And you'd say, well, porn isn't realistic. Now, you were thinking of old school porn, where it was like, uh, extra large sausage pizza delivered, and then that, that's unrealistic. But uh, new porn is more realistic because it's just like a girl sitting in a room and they say, what's your name, your age, and where are you from? And she's like, I'm Holly, I'm 19, I'm from Detroit. Okay, Holly, what are you here to do today? I'm here to get fucked. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then they start fucking, and you're like, that could happen. I could, I could see. That's more realistic, yeah. But erotica is a little different because I was, and this is a real story, real erotica story, because I really tried to do this and to get my innocence back. And so I was reading it, and so this particular story, they said, I was taking a cooking glass, and there's a beautiful girl in the cooking class and we were flirting back and forth. And, oh, I was so nervous when we were cooking the souffle, you know, and I rubbed elbows against her. And, and I was like, okay, yeah, this is good. Let's get my innocence back. I can picture this. And then, like, after the class, we were tasked to stay behind and clean the kitchen. And I was thinking, oh, now's my chance. It's just me and her. Now, the kitchen door closed, but it didn't lock. We could be discovered at any moment if something were to happen. But so far, nothing had happened. And so, we're, you know, they're building the tension. And then I'm like, oh, what's going to happen? And then uh, we were washing the dishes, giggling, making some jokes. And then she uh, went over to the cupboard and pulled out some oil. And then she said, oops, I spilled oil on my tits. Do you want to fuck them? I was like, get the fuck out of here. Never had I spilled oil on my tits? Do you want to fuck them? No one's ever said that. It's like that is the most unrealistic thing I've ever heard. What the fuck? I've taken cooking classes. I've stayed after and helped clean up. No one's ever done that. If they did that, I'd be like, what the fuck is going on? No way. No way. Now tonight, when you go home, sure, one of your wiser girlfriends will probably say that. But before tonight, no one's ever said that. So, yeah. Boo. So, back to the, uh, the porn. So another realistic porn title is, you know, slut doesn't have rent money, right? And you're like, oh yeah, that's totally realistic, because I'm sure there's plenty of sluts that don't have rent money. And so I was uh, like, well, I gotta click and see how she resolves this. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, that should buy her some time. Yeah. And then, and I, I, have a, I have a friend that has a lot of rentals, a lot of rental units, and I said, dude, how often does this happen? Does this happen a lot? He goes, it never fucking happens. <laughs> and I said, are you sure? And he goes, yeah, I'm pretty fucking sure. Yeah, that never happens. And I said, do you have any, any girls that appear to be sluts in your rentals? <laughs> and he said, yeah, on occasion I get some slutty looking girls. He said, they just don't pay rent. They don't have rent money, they just don't pay. I was like, well, that's some bullshit, <laughs> you know? They need to educate themselves through video. <laughs> have you ever left the house and thought you might have some cum on you? Now, hold on, let me explain. 
<laughs> Let me explain before you jump to conclusions. So, first of all, this isn't for the ladies, because ladies, of course, you've left the house. Come on, you. Before. But for the guys, for guys, have you left the house? Not you had, not some other dudes come on you, but your own come on you because, you know, you might be doing a systems check, you know, system check just to make sure that everything is running smoothly, and then you realize, I have somewhere to be. I gotta go. And, you know, sometimes that stuff gets around, gets places, and so the reason why I bring this up is I had to catch a flight, and, you know, I don't like to get on the airplane with full balls because, you know, there's cabin pressure, and who knows? What could happen? So I was, you know, taking care of business, and then I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna miss my flight. I gotta go. So go to the airport, and then I'm going through TSA, and I was selected for additional screening. <laughs> you don't know where this is going. <laughs> so uh, the guy pulls me to the side, and he has that little square of paper. I don't know if you've had this done, but he wipes your hands, and then he wiped my laptop computer. And then I said, so how does this work? And he said, okay, I'm going to put this in this machine, and if it turns green, you're free to go. If it turns red, you and I are going to have a talk. Okay. So he puts it in the machine, turns red. He said, you tested positive for explosive residue. And I said, semen? And he goes, what? And I said, does it detect semen? She goes, no. And then we're both just standing there. So I'm like, and then he's like, what the fuck is going on? And so after a, what seemed like an eternity, we're just standing there. And then he goes, do you have a dog? And I said, no. And he goes, all right, you're free to go. <laughs> and then so I'm, OK, I start walking away. And then I look back, and he's just standing there like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then, so then I'm thinking, does he think I have a dog that came on my computer? <laughs> or a dog that was manufacturing explosives? <laughs> I don't know. That's a, it was a really interesting, uh, interesting thing. It's a mystery. <laughs> if, if, you, if any of you work for TSA or something, feel free to let me know. Um, I, uh, I was out with a young lady one time. Uh, we were, I was dating her, actually. And we were going to a company function. Laughing already? Because I was out with a woman? <laughs> All right. So we were out to her company function, and we pull into the parking garage, and she says, do you want to fuck before we go in? And I said, no. <laughs> and she said, why not? And I said, we're adults. Uh, I have a home. You have a home. If you wanted to fuck, I could have fucked you when I picked you up. Not here. And she goes, it'd be so exciting in the car, though. I said, you're fucking 40 years old. That's gross. I'm going to fuck a 40-year-old chick in my car. I have suede seats. I don't let people eat in my car. I have 40-year-old woman juices dripping all over my seats. That shit doesn't Febreze out. And uh, I was thinking, also, I don't think I'm insured for if you break your hip or lose your dentures behind the seat. And she said, but you're older than me. I said, that has nothing to do with this. She said, so if I was 23, you'd fuck me in the car? Absolutely. Not only is it the right thing to do, but it increases the value of the car. And she said, what? How does that work? And I said, well, if I take it to trade it in, I say, hey, man, I'm adding $500 to the price of the car. And you'd say, why? I fucked a 23-year-old in here. And you'd be like, nice. <laughs> right? But if I say, hey, I'm trading in this car, I fucked a 40-year-old woman in here. He'd go, oh, why? I go, I have low self-esteem, I guess. He'd say, well, sir, we're going to have to knock 500 bucks off the price of the car because it's got to be professionally cleaned. I go, I understand. And she goes, nice, Nick. And I said, don't worry. I'll fuck you when we get back to the house. And she goes, oh, is that what you think? 
What? What did I do? Like, I'm some kind of asshole? Anyway, that relationship did not last. So, yeah, that... Uh, apparently, sometimes people think, you know, you guys know I'm a gentleman. I don't, I don't know what I did there. If you don't, please explain it to me. So I know that some of you are thinking, some of you with uh, good memories that were paying attention are like, so you and your coworkers and friends can fuck a doll in your car, and Scarlett Johansson apparently, but it's, you can't fuck a 40 year old woman in the car? Yeah, that's, that's right, that's correct. <laughs> it's my car, I can make up whatever rules I want. It's a hypothetical love doll in the car. This was a real scenario with someone trying to fucking, uh, you know, 40 year old woman in my car, get out of here. Uh, the Scarlett Johansson thing, I, I, I kind of laughed to myself about it because I go to a lot of fundraisers, and I was thinking, man, you know, I'm gonna run into Scarlett Johansson, she's gonna go, what the fuck was that about? I'm full of load out in your car? And yeah, anyway, I'd be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I just needed a reference that people would, would get. But do you wanna go out to the car? And, no, okay, all right, <laughs> very cool. Um, I was on a, a date. A, I like how there's a, <laughs> it was on a date, ha! It was on a date and it was the second date. And she had said, well, I've, I've really enjoyed, I enjoyed our first date and this is going really well. So let's plan on having sex on the third date if you think you can handle it. And I said, okay, first of all, thank you for the heads up. I, I'm looking forward to the sex on the third date. Second of all, why do women say stupid shit like that, like, if you think you can handle it? Has anyone ever said, I'm not sure if I can handle it. Maybe we should wait till the eighth or ninth date so I can train to make sure I can handle it. No, of course I can handle it. No one's ever, I don't think I can handle it. I can handle it, okay? So now, it's the third date. And we go get some appetizers and some cocktails. And appetizers because if you know you're about to go fuck, you're not gonna go to like all you can eat enchiladas or something like that, because that's a mistake. I've done that before. So I know, don't do that. So keep it light. And so we, we get back to my place. Ah, huh, see, yeah, it's getting exciting again. Get back to my place and so we're making out a little bit, gall gall, right? Making out. And uh, then, uh, so there's a thing that I do that I found out that apparently no one else does. I'm the only one, judging by the facial expressions, I'm the only one that does this apparently. And that is when things are getting hot and heavy and we're stripping down, I fold my clothes. <laughs> so it kind of, an example is, uh, it might be an obsessive compulsive thing, I don't know. but. So an example would be, you know, we're making out, we're sitting there, and then she starts undressing, and then, you know, I'll say something like, get ready for the big one, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna take you to Pound Town. <laughs> and then her face is like, what the fuck? Did he just fold his clothes? And then so it took me a long time to figure this out because I did this the first time I ever had sex and I did it the most recent time I had sex. <laughs> uh, it's just something that I do. But I didn't realize this was an issue until very recently when I was like, why does everyone always look confused? But they don't, oh, the folding the clothes. Nobody probably does it because everybody in the movies, they're just like in it, you know? They're in it and they're just throwing stuff everywhere. But it's the floor. There's spiders and stuff. I don't know what's going on down there. I can't have my clothes on the floor. So... Anyway, we're stripped down, and then I was like, oh, she looks confused, whatever. And then, you know, start making out again, and then it's like, hey, let's, let's get this started. And she goes, wait, do you have any rules? You know, what the fuck? <laughs> she goes, do you have any rules before we get started? Anything to, you know, that's off the table? What, what, are, you, what are you into here? And I said, no one's ever asked me that before. I said, okay, rules. Um, okay, number one. I'm not gonna eat your pussy. All right? <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> she asked me for, hey, these are my options. 
<laughs> number one, I'm not gonna eat your pussy. Number two, my safe word is spaghetti. <laughs> so she's like, okay, you're not gonna eat my pussy, and your safe word is spaghetti, yes. She goes, anything else? I go, no, okay. I say, what, what do you got? You got any, you got any rules? And she goes, I'm not gonna put my hair in pigtails. I'm like, what the fuck is that about? <laughs> I would have never, it would have been, wouldn't have occurred to me to ask you to put your hair in pigtails. And she goes, well, good, because I'm not gonna. Said, okay. And I said, what else? And she said, that's it. I go, that's it. Does anything that I can possibly think of that doesn't involve you putting your hair in pigtails? And she goes, yeah. It's like, wow, shit. I've been looking for you for like 20 years. Where have you been? And she's like, yeah, you ready to get started? I said, yeah, let's, uh, let's start off with some anal. <laughs> and she goes, whoa, 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 no, no anal. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? That wasn't on your list. You didn't say no anal. You said no pigtails. And she's like, yeah, yeah. And then she said the most diplomatic thing you can say. She said, normally it wouldn't be a problem, but you're too well endowed for anal. And I was like, I'm going to accept that answer. I'm going to, I'm going to let that slide. I don't feel I'm too well endowed, but you know, I'm just a regular guy, deluxe. But I was like, okay, I will let this slide. Fine. No anal. Then she goes, so what do you want to do now? And I said, well, I kind of want you to put your hair in pigtails and fuck your ass. And, uh, I was just being honest, you know? And then she said, I'll do it for a dozen roses. I was like, what the fuck, where'd that come from? And I said, you said you didn't want to do this. She said, I don't, but I want a dozen roses, and if you promise to buy me a dozen roses tomorrow, I'll do it. And I said, fuck you, no. And she goes, what, why? And I said, I'll be damned if you're walking around town telling people I bought you a dozen roses. She goes, what? I said, I don't want to talk about it. And there's a part of my mind that said, what the fuck is wrong with you? But I got principles. Just going around buying people roses. She wouldn't appreciate it. So she said, well, what are we going to do now? I said, when Salt and Peppa had their song, Let's Talk About Sex, they didn't think it was going to be this difficult. And I said, how about we just do the basics? And she goes, what's the basics? I said, like, regular people have sex. She goes, how do regular people have sex? I'm like, you know, regular sex. She goes, what's that? I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And then I was thinking, do I know how regular people have sex? I don't, maybe I don't know. I said, okay, um, so limited missionary. Then you on top for a while, do your thing. And then we finish in doggy or prone. Does that sound good? And she goes, yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. And she goes, one more thing. So what's that? She says, I'm going to need you to choke me hard. And if I pass out, just ease up a little bit. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, I was going to do that anyway. Huh. Huh. I'm CPR certified. I'll bring her back. I haven't lost one yet. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So, we, uh, we had a very passionate evening. It was very good. <sighs> I had a, uh, had a friend of mine who tried to set me up with a nice young lady. He, he said, uh, hey, I saw this girl, perfect for you. I saw her and I said, that's Nick's girl. That's all you. Oh, you got to do this. Oh, this is perfect for you. And I was like, what, me, really, what? And then he said, yeah, it's my new next door neighbor. Like, okay, tell me more. He said, yeah, she's, she's beautiful. All right. He said, you really like her. I saw her and I was like, that's Nick's type. Okay. Oh, well, what do we got? He said, well, she's really gorgeous. Looks like a Eastern European model. Okay, all right. One small, tiny thing, though. So what's that? He said, she might have a little bit of a meth problem. <laughs> I was like, what? A meth problem? Why? What makes you think that? And he said, well, a couple of weeks ago, the, the people from the state came and took her kids away. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. And so she, her meth problem's big enough that she, they're taking her kids away and you want to hook her up with me? And he goes, well, you're not a big fan of kids, so they're, they're not there anymore. It's, it's just you and her. You guys can be together. 
I was like, oh, that's fucked up. But I like where your head's at. Yeah, yeah. I like what you're thinking. So I said, you know what? But my spidey sense is telling me this isn't a good idea. I probably shouldn't be hooked up with this meth chick. And he said, uh, you want to see a picture? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I should say hi at least, you know. It's, I'd hate to just be one of these people that just so quick to judge. You know, this having her kids taken away, that was like two weeks ago. That's in the past. I'm sure she's learned from her mistakes and, and so go ahead and hook it up. Now, two weeks later, uh, he calls me, he says, abort, abort, don't worry about it. Uh, never mind about that. And I said, why, what happened? He said, I fucked her. I was like, what, you fucked her? He said, yeah. And uh, it was really bad. It was a horrible scene. You don't want anything to do with that. I was like, oh, shit. OK. And I said, well, in the future, whenever you're going to hook me up with someone, how about you go ahead and try to fuck her? And if she lets you, automatic no for me. <laughs> He's like, what? And I said, any girl that would let you fuck her, not for me. <laughs> He's like, well, that's a fucked up thing to say. It's a fucked up thing to have to say. <laughs> because, and you can't feel sorry for me trying to hook me up with some meth chick. You know, so apparently his judgment isn't very good. This is the same guy that uh, one day we were driving around and we we're gonna cook up some food and I said, do you have any booze at your house? And he said, I have a jar of wine. And I go, wait a minute, you have a, you have a jar of wine? <laughs> he goes, yeah. And I said, did it come in a jar? He said, no, no, it came in a bottle. And then you put it in a jar? Yeah. And you serve this to guests? Yeah. Go, what the fuck is wrong with you? You don't put wine in a jar. And if you put wine in a jar, if you're like, well, I put wine in a jar, it's fine. Fuck you, it's not fine. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a horrible, horrible thing to do. Um, I was dating again. I was dating a, another young lady, a beautiful young lady, and we were out to lunch. I think we'd been going out for about a month and a half. You know, everything's going pretty nice. And uh, I was, the, we we're waiting for the waiter, and I said, well, I'm going to go take a piss. And if the waiter comes while I'm gone, I would like the pork chop. Please order the pork chop. And she said, okay, gotcha. So I go, I come back. She said, the waiter came, I ordered. Okay, cool. Waiter brings my pork chop. I cut into it, and it's bloody. I said, like, oh, we got to send this back. And she said, why? I said, well, you're not supposed to eat bloody pork. And she said, uh, oh, that's the steak. I go, it's the fucking steak. I asked you to order the pork chop. She goes, I forgot. You forgot? How'd you forget? I was just gone for two minutes. And she goes, well, sorry. Just enjoy the steak. So I take a bite of the steak, and she said, how's the steak? And I said, it's good, but I'm wondering what the pork chop tastes like. And she goes, oh, fuck you. You that's what I'm like, oh, fuck me. I'm an asshole. You fucked up my order. And she's like, I was so mad at you. I was so mad. You're mad at me because you fucked up my shit. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. She goes, you know what? You know who you remind me of? I go, who? She goes, Hitler. I go, fucking Hitler? And she goes, yes, you remind me of Hitler. Has no one told you that before? Like, no, no one's told me that before. Like, if, if you were the fourth or fifth person, they're like, wow, shit, the, I need to really take a long look in the mirror. That's the fourth person that's told me that I remind them of Hitler. No, no one's told me that. And she goes, yeah, you remind me of Hitler. And I said, you're dating me. And she goes, yeah? I said, you're dating a guy that reminds you of Hitler? And she goes, yeah. And she goes, uh, you get a lot of shit done, but I don't approve of your methods. <laughs> and I go, is that, that's the similarity with me and Hitler? We get shit done, but you don't approve of our methods? And she goes, yeah. Oh, there's so many other people from history you could have chosen. Not, I was like, you're, you're fucked up. You're crazy. And she's like, well, I'm sticking with my reference. Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I still dated her for another two months after that. And she's crazy, and crazy girls usually have good sex. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, that was that was quite a thing. The uh, I had a friend. <laughs> I had a friend. I had a friend uh, come through from Italy, and uh, he was passing through town from uh, visiting our great country from Italy. And I said, "Hey, man, I'll uh, take you out for some pork chops and martinis, lamb chops and martinis." 
lamb chops and martinis. And he's like, okay, so then we're sitting there eating lamb chops and martinis like people do. And then we're talking about our projects and what's going on. And then out of the blue, he says, uh, you know, I don't feel like a real man unless I fuck another man. And I was like, uh, huh, well, that's a random dinner thing to throw out there. And then he follows that up with, is there anything in your apartment that I need to see? And I said, no. <laughs> and he said, are you sure? And I said, Yes, I'm sure. I'm not going to help you feel like a real man. Not, not fucking me. You know, I get it, because, you know, come on. I keep it tight. Right? But I was, it's like, uh, you know, no offense, but I, I, I just don't roll that way. It's not my thing. And besides, surely you're too well endowed <laughs> to be fucking me. You know, I got hemorrhoids and stuff. It'd be like a Daniel Day-Lewis movie, because there will be blood. Right? Oh. Oh. Yeah, oh, that's where the line is. Oh, yeah. I wonder where it is. Yeah. Oh, man. But the, the takeaway... So, well, I, I ended the night unfucked. Which is good, yeah. Uh, so, and that's a good, good movie, I think. It's like, this summer, Nick Shelton remains unfucked. Yeah. But uh, the takeaway from that whole thing is that the line, is there anything in your apartment that I need to see? I was like, I'm taking that line. Because sometimes, women don't want to seem hoary or whatever, and so, but they might want to invite you back to their place. So if I say, you know, set them up, is there anything in your apartment that I need to see? And they say, oh, I have paintings. And I'm like, let's check out your paintings. Next thing you know, balls deep, scrogging it out, right? So it's like, I'm taking that, I'm taking that line. And so like one of the lines that I use to have people come to my apartment is, you know, I have a hundred gallon saltwater aquarium and I have seahorses and my seahorses just had babies, baby seahorses. And the fascinating thing about seahorses is the male seahorse carries the babies and the little pouch in the stomach and they come squirting out bleep, bleep. And there's little seahorses and they're going around, they're really adorable. And they curl their little tails around the plants, dodging the bigger fish they don't want to get eaten. And uh, oh, it's so cute, they're so adorable. Do you want to come check them out? And they say, yeah, yeah, I want to check them out. So here's the thing, I, I don't have seahorses. <laughs> and, uh, I don't have an aquarium. <laughs> so when they come over, there's one of three reactions. So there's either, you know, we walk in, oh, by the way, I don't have seahorses. And they say, what do you have to drink? All right, good, it's a good reaction. Or I don't have seahorses. And they say, okay, I'm leaving, bye. And you're like, okay, that's fair, all right. Third reaction, oh, by the way, I don't have seahorses. Oh shit, please don't kill me. Right? Now, if you get the, oh shit, please don't kill me, it is a bad idea to joke about killing them. <laughs> because they do not think it's funny. And you know who else doesn't think it's funny? The police. <laughs> They'll be like, uh, so, Mr. Shelton, you, you like to lure women back to your apartment with the promise of seahorses that you don't have? Like. Well, if you say it like that, it sounds fucked up. Also. And I don't like how you used lure. I'm not luring anybody. Uh, I'm inviting. I'm inviting women to my home to look at seahorses I don't have. But there's no rules against that. That's fine. Feel free to use that, officer, if you want to. You know, I'm, I'm not a killer, but I, uh, I will murder that pussy, you know what I mean? Right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the, the police officer did not uh, laugh. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you're in for a long night. But, yeah, it's a good line. And if you have seahorses, like, I would think women should know no one has seahorses in their house. No one has that. So if they tell you that, you, you know that seahorses are hard to keep alive. No one has that. So if you're invited, know that they're probably trying to get in your pants. That's a safe safe bet, I would think. Um, let's see, I wanted to talk about, I went to a wedding, uh, went to a friend's wedding and I saw the, uh, the bridesmaids and I saw one, I was like, ooh, ooh, that one, that one's for me. And uh, so the groom came over and he's like, hey, what's going on? I said, what's up with that bridesmaid? I like that. And he said, 
you want me to hook it up? I said, yeah, hook it up. He goes, cool, she's got her GED. And I said, what, why the fuck did you tell me that? <laughs> and uh, so for those of you who might not know, a GED is if you drop out of high school or don't finish high school for some reason, you can take some tests to get the equivalent of graduating high school. Uh, I automatically assume people graduate high school when I meet them, I don't wonder about that. So back to our thing, I said, why did you tell me that? And he's like, I wanted you to know that she's educated. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what? Okay, I said, I wish you didn't tell me because now I'm gonna be thinking about that. It's gonna fuck me up. He goes, why, why? Just, do you want me to hook it up or not? I said, hook it up. Okay. So, uh, a little while later, she comes over and she says, hey, I heard that you wanted to, uh, you know, see me and take me out, but he said that you have to fuck me first before you'll take me to dinner. Is that true? <laughs> yes. <laughs> She goes, why is that? Well, because that's how I know where to take you to dinner. Based on the quality of the fuck, I will know what the dinner options are. And she said, so, if I fuck you real good, will you take me to the Cheesecake Factory? And I said, shit, I'll take you twice. I thought you were gonna name someplace good. And she goes, the Cheesecake Factory is good. And I go, no, no it's not. They have, a, they have a big menu with a lot of stuff and it's all okay, but they don't do anything really good. And she goes, well, I like it. And I said, well, you know what? Uh, cancel that, I'm not gonna fuck you or take you out. She's like, what? I said, you compared your pussy to the Cheesecake Factory. I don't need that in my life. <laughs> she goes, are you fucking serious? I go, yeah, yeah, I'm serious. She goes, fuck you. Nope, no fuck me. <laughs> no, nope, not today. And then so she walks off and then the guy comes over and he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I said, she wanted to go to the Cheesecake Factory. And he goes, ooh, I love the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> I said, do, do you have a GED? He goes, oh, fuck you. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, all right, cool, cool. Oh man, one more date joke for you guys. Um, so I was dating a beautiful young lady. This was our third date. Ah, the magic of the third date. I'm even gonna walk around the stage a little bit. Magic of the third date. And so the first two dates were lunch dates, and this one was a salsa date. We went out salsa dancing. Oh, it was nice. And uh, then afterwards, we went to my house. So it, it was a double date, that's important. Double date, so it was me, her, and a friend of mine, his chick, go back to my house. And then I'm thinking, what's my move? What am I gonna do? You know, do, is there something I can say that's cool, it's gonna escalate? Or am I gonna do one of these sort of things? You know, oh, hey. <laughs> and so, I was like, what am I gonna do? And we're all sitting there watching TV, and then she says, where's the bathroom? She gets up, goes to the bathroom. And then I'm thinking about, okay, all right, so I'm gonna to try to kind of get in there and maybe put a hand on the thigh or something. And then she comes out of the bathroom wearing just a towel. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess I don't have to think of anything. So my friend saw this, he's like, well, it's getting late, I guess we gotta go. And then so they leave, she's standing on the edge of the living room with the towel. Now let me uh, paint a little picture for you. This young lady is, 22 years old, Latina, five foot four, 115 pounds, gorgeous, martial arts aficionado, does a little Brazilian jiu-jitsu, so she's toned up real nice, right? And uh, so I walk over to her and I said, towel, nice. And she said, yeah, you were taking too long. I have shit to do tomorrow. Uh, I figured I'd speed this up. And I said, I like how you think. I like how you think, we're gonna get along just great. So I take her hand, take her to the bedroom, and uh, stand in there, kiss a little bit, and go, mom, mom, right? And then she drops the towel. And I said, wow. And she said, I know. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, confidence. Ah, oh, she's so confident. I was like, all right. Suck her nose. <laughs> no, no. And uh, I was like, oh shit. And so, just absolutely beautiful. So I was like, oh, wow, perfection. You're about to get destroyed. <laughs> And 
I turn, I look, and she has a, like, what the fuck? Did he just fold the towel? And then I was like, oh yeah, that's, don't fold. I forgot, I forgot not to fold. So then I'm taking my clothes off and I'm trying to throw, throw them over. There's a chair, because I don't want it on the floor. So there's a chair, and I throw, miss the chair, and I'm like, hold on. Don't worry about it. Take my pants off. Don't worry, don't worry, just put it on the chair. And then, so now, now we're ready. And uh, so we go over to the bed. And as we're relaxing into the bed, she grabs my arm, flips me over, pins me, and says, submit. And now I'm like, there must be some mistake. Right? <laughs> and it's uh, like, huh. And then so I was like, I can get out of this. So I have a little bit of a martial arts background myself. So I kind of slip out, start to get up. She grabs me again, flips me over, grabs my arm, submit. And so now she's almost like breaking my arm. like, ugh. And so now in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> Did, you know, but I was thinking, it's gonna really kill the mood if I say, you're hurting me, <laughs> spaghetti. <laughs> right, so I was like, all right. So then I had a flashback to when I was a young teenager and I was talking to my parents and I said to them, hey, you know, I think I'm getting a little weird. Uh, <laughs> can I get some therapy or something? I really need to talk to some people because I'm kind of kind of weird. And they said, well, yeah, yeah, we can get you some therapy or, you can stop being a little bitch. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> I said, wow, I really wasn't expecting that. That was, huh, guess I'll stop being a little bitch. Um, so, uh, back to our scenario, I'm pinned there, and I was thinking, I need to stop being a little bitch. And so, slipped out, flipped over, pinned her, and said, I'm the boss, I'm running this shit, and you will address me as sir. <laughs> And then I licked her face. <laughs> Seemed like the right thing to do at the time. I was caught up in the moment. And I said, do you understand? And she said, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. And we started fucking hard, hard, violent fucking. And I was like, oh, shit. So as this crazy hard circus fucking was going, I, was, I had three thoughts in my mind. The first thought was... Does she fuck like this all the time? <laughs> like, if it's a quiet Sunday morning, the sun is just kind of coming over the horizon, she's asleep, I wake her up, hey babe, what's going on? She's gonna be, it's on, motherfucker! Ah! And they're like, hello, spaghetti! Ah! You know? So, and then, you know, who taught her how to fuck like this? Where do you learn this? And then, you know, number three was, we're both gonna have bruises tomorrow. We're gonna have bruises from this. You know, I'm concerned about that. <laughs> and so, anyway, we're fucking, and we, we did the basics, all the basics, you know? And then, some more, we started getting into some Kama Sutra stuff, some advanced fucking. And I was like, man, this is some really serious fucking going on, you know? It's like a porn that I'm in, right? <laughs> so, there's no fast forward in to see, well, how's this gonna go, where are we going? It's just, I'm in it, real time. And, uh, then when we were getting some like really, you know, lift your leg, there's all kinds of really advanced stuff. And then all of a sudden she's like, ow, 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 ow. And I was like, oh, wait, what? She goes, I'm hurt. And I said, what? She goes, I'm hurt, sir. <laughs> and I said, oh, uh, you don't have to do the sir right now if you're hurt. But thank you, I appreciate it. And, uh, and I said, what happened? She goes, I think I pulled a groin muscle. And I said, you really should stretch before you have sex with me. <laughs> And she said, get the fuck out of here with that. And uh, I said, well, let's get you dressed. So we got her all dressed up and uh, got her home. So she's kind of like limping around, you know? And so we get her home. Now, next day, one of my friends, the, the guy from the, the double date, he came by and he's like, I saw her this morning. What the fuck happened last night? And you know, you gotta play it up for your boys. I said, she thought she was gonna come into my house and put it down on me, she better bow down and bask in the glory that is my dick. <laughs> Confidence, it worked. <laughs> and he's like, what? And I said, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And he said, she was hobbling around, she could barely walk. I said, let me tell you something, Holmes. That's what happens when I put it all the way in. <laughs> Apparently, 
she couldn't handle it. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for coming out. I love you very much. I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. I love you more than what can express. Thank you very much. Drive safe, get home safe.